Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this episode, we are going to talk about what's in my bag from an etiquette perspective. And by the way, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and drop me a comment below on what you like to keep in your bag etiquette wise. I want to know. And here's what's in mine. Okay, so first of all, you know, as an etiquette teacher, there are all these things, whether from beauty and grooming or hygiene or career perspective that you need to be aware of. So actually, firstly, I gotta tell you, I actually don't really like carrying handbags. If preferred, I always try to go handbag free or I try to go for little waist bags because I like to be hands free. But obviously when I go to work and especially when I'm teaching, there's always a ton of stuff that I have to bring, especially if I'm teaching. But on a day-to-day -day work basis, this is basically what I have. So let's open it up. Let's take a peek. Da -da -da -da. And it's pretty full. So when I do go to work, I usually need a decent size bag. You can see this bag is like the size of my head. Okay, so first things first, as a good, well-mannered girl or good etiquette girl, it's important to stay organized. So over here, I have my Moleskine notebook, which literally has my life. I think I've been through like maybe, I don't know, 20? Definitely at least 15 Moleskine notebooks since I started my finishing school in China in 2012. So I have a whole stack of them and they're all multicolored. You know, I like to look at them like that. So for me, Moleskine books that I really like have lines. So, you know, just like a, just simple rose lines. I don't like plain because it's hard to write straight on plain and I don't like all checkered and all that stuff. So basically this is what I have and you can see, I mean, there's a lot of chicken scratch, but basically every time I start a new topic or a new meeting, I, you know, have started a new page and I take it to all my client meetings and whenever I have little ideas about you know stuff for my classes and just staying organized that's rule number one because remember tidy workspace tidy calendar tidy home means tidy mind rule 101 etiquette wise okay now you probably just saw me take out these two pieces of paper from my notebook and I always have them clamped in this kind of on page one. Oh, and by the way page one I always write my name Sarah and I always write like May 2021 this is when I started this notebook well this is something that I really can't live out and it is my calendar and my friends always make fun well my cousins actually always make fun of me for this when I pull it out because yes I'm very old school I don't really like to keep my diary on my phone I know everybody does now I did at some point but sometimes I mean I have so many things going on it's so easy to lose stuff or just to not see something that's on your screen so for me I have this Excel calendar that I download from some online website and I've been doing it since 2013 now and it, and it's an Excel spreadsheet and each sheet is a month so I feel Fill it in. I basically update this thing every two days and, you know, print out a new one every two days. I always print double-sided so that we're saving the environment. And then I'll also scribble. So I'll have my pen or my pencil and I'll be scribbling as things go along. So whenever people ask me, oh, you know, Wednesday dinner, is that okay? First thing I do is pull this out and I stay very organized. And that way I can see close up and I can see, you know, high level too. Like, oh, okay, three weeks ago I was doing this. Oh, three weeks later I'm going to be doing this. And it's very nice and clean and clear. So yeah, my older cousin guy cousin Jaren was like once he was teasing me he's like I'm gonna steal your little piece of paper you're like grandma because <laughs> our grandmother also you know obviously she's from that generation likes to keep everything written down but yes so this is very key to stay organized from an etiquette perspective and make sure I'm punctual to all my meetings punctuality is everything in fact I always try to be even five ten minutes early to meetings and that way you know I can use the loo I can wash my hands I can sit down get settled maybe you know get a glass of water first check my phone reply to some messages and that way I'm approaching my meeting in a calm frame of mind as opposed to super rushed and be like oh you know sitting down and da 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 da. So this other sheet of paper is my to-do list and it's actually on a piece of scrap paper and it's something that I have done since I was as young as I can remember maybe seven years old in Hong Kong. My mom who is very much a tiger mother she would have me every time before I went to bed she would have me write down my to-do list. So it's the things that I need to do tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to cover the exact things, but I'm going to show you to do. And you can see it's just, you know, proposals I have to write, I have to update some stuff, I have to pay some people, I have to film this YouTube what's in my bag today and, and upcoming courses I need to prepare for. So that way, you know, one quick look and I know exactly, okay, what I need to do. And I usually organize it so that on the left hand side, it's stuff that's urgent and important. And on the right hand side, it's stuff that is important, but not entirely urgent. So 
So usually I have, I mean, this just has one column, but usually I do have two columns because everything today is important and urgent. And again, you know, I always, I'm very adamant with my staff about keeping old sheets of paper and using them as scrap paper. So even in the office, we have stacks of scrap paper and uh, we have a big clip that we used to clip it with. And then everybody kind of has, you know, uses to write notes. From an etiquette perspective, this again helps me stay super, super organized. Okay, so we have these things. Now let's look what else there is in this bag. Okay, let's see what we can fish out. Ooh. <laughs> so from a beauty perspective, well, there are always two things that I keep from a beauty perspective. I guess there are a couple things, four things, but from a face perspective, here are two things. One is a must have, it is a lip balm. So this lip balm is from Lalabo. I bought it a few months ago. And that's because, you know, from an etiquette perspective, you do not want to have chapped lips. You always want to have some nice, soft, supple, kissable lips. But anyway, look, you just don't want to walk into a meeting or have a conversation with someone and your lips are really dry and chapped. This is beauty and grooming 101. So, you know, I carry this around. I use my finger. Yes, I know some of you are probably like, oh, finger, COVID. But anyway, Put it on and let's make sure, especially as winter's coming, autumn and winter are coming, but I always need chapstick and especially when I travel. But look, I never leave the house without chapstick. Very important. Now, apart from chapstick, this is from a new favorite brand of mine that's French called La Bouche Rouge. Here we go. LBR. And it's really fun because it's got my signatures on it. SJH for Sarah Jane Ho. I have a pink one, I have a red one, but whenever you're about to, let's say, take a picture or you're walking to a meeting, and I'm usually pretty minimal on makeup, but I think the one thing you do want to have is a little bit of lipstick. So you can see, put it on immediately. And I usually, on a day-to-day -day basis, I usually don't use like the full-on kind of thick lipstick. This is really more of a balm. You can see it's like a lipstick balm, so it's more like a tinted moisturizer. And that way it's really easy to apply and I don't have to be so finicky about. Sometimes with proper lipstick, you need to like be really finicky about it. So if someone's like, oh, let's take a picture, or no, I just need to look like I'm trying, then this is a very easy thing to do. My little La Bouche Rouge leather embossed lipstick. So these are the two lippy things that I have. Okay. Oh, here's another beauty and grooming thing. This, you can see, is it says BBI, BBI cream, and it's by the brand Herborian, which is a Korean, it calls itself Korean Skin Therapy Paris and Seoul. And I discovered this in London when I was visiting in one of my Georgetown girlfriends, Rita, took me around to check out some new cool beauty retailers. And she introduced this to me and she said, you have to try it, it's amazing. It's concealer or BB cream, but only for under eye. And so sometimes when you wanna leave the house, and usually on day to day, I don't really put makeup on, but you know, yeah, for those days when you don't wanna put on makeup, but you don't wanna look too bad in case you run into someone, this is what you do. You put this BB cream in. Remember, always use your fourth finger for under eye because your fourth finger is the most gentle finger and your under eye skin, your eye skin is the most delicate skin. But you can see I actually, oh, I actually do have a little eye bags and it's cause I've just been working so crazy hard recently, but I can put a little bit on my finger. Ta-da. And then, so I've got my fourth finger and I literally just pat it under my eye and it looks like I have slept for eight hours. So pretty amazing. From an etiquette perspective, you always wanna look presentable and well-rested, even if you're not. So this is my little secret that my friend Rita passed on to me. Amazing! Okay, so now we got this out of the way, my little secret, and you can see I'm nice and light right under my eyes now. I look way more well-rested than when I opened this video. And let's see. Okay, here is another thing for the face. Every now and then we will have little spots, little who knows what happens. And all of a sudden, you know, there's that little pimple that's about to become a bigger pimple, et cetera, et cetera. But we do girls need something called concealer. And I always like to leave the house with concealer, sometimes in stick form, but I guess today's bag, it's my Ipsa, which is a kind of like a must have for a lot of makeup artists. So you can see there are three different kinds of colors and you can mix and match, but this is really a must have for just in case, you know, something happens in my 
my skin is really sensitive, so even the slightest speck of dust on my skin, like I go pink, I go red. So immediately I'm applying this on. Beauty and Grooming 101. Okay, so also kind of beauty and grooming related, but this is my favorite ever hand cream. It's called L'Occitane from France, and it's got 20% shea butter. So you can see here, I mean, it's like really old school. I think a lot of friends already use it, but especially, well, maybe with COVID, we don't really shake hands anymore. And in China, we don't really shake hands either, but I always think it's important to have nice, soft hands for whether, you know, you're gonna shake your hand or whether you're gonna be holding hands with your boyfriend, you don't want a coarse dry hand, that's like a man's hand. You want a nice, soft, supple girl's hand. So, you know, for girls, definitely from beauty and grooming, your hands and your elbows and the heels of my feet are actually every night before I go to bed, I definitely moisturize those three areas. So yeah, this is in my bag. Always. Okay, this is my Tempo Petite tissue bag. Being a very good Hong Kong girl, I mean, in Hong Kong, we grew up with all of our mothers who were all Hong Kong women are the most practical women you'll ever meet. And all of our mothers had bags and the first thing they put was this. And you know, etiquette means cleanliness, hygiene. This you always need in case you know you're gonna eat on something, snack on something, blow your nose, some, you, somebody else needs to blow their nose. In China, in case you need to use the loo, because sometimes there isn't always tissue in the restrooms or run out of tissue. So this is a must have always. And in fact, this is not just for yourself, it's for your family and who you're dating and everyone around you. And I can tell you, men at some point will always need tissue and they will never carry tissue. So they really look to the girl to provide this tissue. Definitely always in my bag. All right, oh, my moss. Yes, since COVID. You know, it's funny because before COVID, only Asians wore masks. And in China, people wear masks when they were sick. So if we're sick, if we're coughing, we wear a mask because we don't want to pass the virus to other people. And it, it's always been that way. And now it's, you know, the whole world wears a mask in order to not get sick and, you know, etc. When do you need to wear a mask in China? Because honestly, in Shanghai, not that many people wear masks anymore. But if you go into the subway, you go into hospitals, if you go into shopping malls, they do a temperature check and they request that you put on your mask. And actually some high-end office towers also require that. But generally speaking now, Shanghai has managed COVID really well and in restaurants and stuff, I mean, you walk on the street, nobody's really wearing a mask anymore. So for COVID etiquette, number one important thing is wear your mask. From what I understand, in some places, even students, when they go to go to school every day wearing masks, you know, it's really, I can't even imagine. I mean, wearing a mask is really uncomfortable, but that's why it's all the more important that you are, you have a good face wash especially for this area, which can definitely, I mean, I remember when I was in Hong Kong and they were really militant about wearing masks everywhere, even if you were jogging outside. But, you know, I started growing a couple of zits here, so it's extra important to have a good face wash and to always be, you know, washing your face very well. All right, from a business etiquette perspective, I always carry my business card. So this is this is a really old boutique of Veneta business card holder that I've had as long as I can remember, maybe like seven, eight years. And you can see in the front is where I put other people's name cards and the back is where my name cards off. So in China, especially when you go to business meetings, the first thing you do is you pull out your business card and when you give it, facing the other person so the other person can read it. You definitely do not give it so it's facing yourself. It's not supposed to be for you to read, it's for the other person to read. And so this is the, really the first thing you do in Chinese business etiquette. And usually, let's say if I'm going to a meeting and there are a few of us and there are a few of them, we're sitting across from the table and the other people give me their business cards, what I do is I line them out in front of me in the same order that the people are sitting directly across from me. That way I know exactly whose name is what and, who, and who's what title. And that's something that's like Chinese business etiquette and meaning etiquette. You lay it all out and only when the meeting is over, then you take the name cards and put them away in your business card holder, which you then put back into your bag. All right, let's see what else is here. Oh, pen. Very important to have a pen so you can write stuff down. Shoppy pen. Well, this is because I came out with my etiquette book in China a few years ago and sometimes you know wherever I go it's not unusual that I'll need to sign a book so I like to use my sharpie pen to sign my books and in fact it's always good to have like a second pen because sometimes some people need to borrow pens or something and it's can be annoying but you always want to make sure that you have a pen especially if you go to a meeting I mean I've always told my staff and they all know that every meeting they need to take notebook and pen and they write by hand in the beginning some of them were taking their whole laptop to a meeting and I was like no do not use your laptop when you're meeting with somebody and then type the notes on your laptop because when you have your laptop up that's the, the screen is number one it's a barrier for subconscious 
consciously with the other person. And number two, once you have, once the other person sees you're facing a screen, it doesn't feel the connection isn't there. And they don't know if you're like on Messenger or Facebook or something with your screen. They don't know what you're doing. So you want to show that you, they have your total attention. And yes, that does mean the old school way, which is notebook and pen. Oh, my shades. I love these shades. So obviously it depends what climate you're in, but in Shanghai, it's pretty sunny these days. Sometimes I have to take photos and I'm not wearing makeup. I'm just not looking good or I'm looking really puffy because I didn't sleep well. I definitely throw these on and then take a photo. So always good to have a pair of shades. Oh, my little hard disk. So this is my little drive. It's a SSD drive. It's two TBs and it's by SanDisk. And, and this actually, cause I, I mean, literally my whole life is in this whole life. Hope no one comes and tries to steal it after I say that. Before I used to use big hard drives, clunky hard drives, but now obviously technology is getting better and this is really the most reliable, the SanDisk. And so literally for my whole office, everybody has these SanDisks. And uh, since everybody has them now, I identified mine by putting a little red ribbon on it that says Institute Sarita, which is the name of my finishing school here in China. So it's great to have everything in a hard disk because then that way you don't always have to carry your computer around. And should you need anything, you know, you just, I have the wire too, so you just plug it in everywhere you go. And then this is nice and light. I mean, this is never out of my sight, ever. This is always by my side because it, like I said, my whole life is in it. Ooh. Okay, AirPods, the most amazing invention ever. I do a lot of calls with different countries, with different colleagues and friends and family. So I like to have my AirPods on and that way I'm hands-free. So I can be doing other stuff. I can be power walking. I really like to power walk and, and, and chat on the phone, catch up with people over the phone while I'm doing that. Cause it's so nice to power walk in the French concession. And also this way you have no wires because with traditional headphones, you have wires and it's just like, can get in the way of a lot of stuff. Like if I'm trying to have a drink at the same time or blah, blah, blah. So this is really, really good for telephone etiquette, but really more for yourself than the other person. Oh, and last but not least, the smallest thing, but really critical thing is ta-da-da-da. Yes, it is a hair tie. And this usually, right, for a lot of us girls, our hair ties on our wrist. I have multiple hair ties in my multiple, in multiple different bags. I mean, look, I like to have my hair down, but when it comes to eating, then I definitely like to put my hair up in a ponytail. Or or if it comes to you know a serious meeting like a negotiation, hair up. In Chinese, we call this I look more gan lian, kan shang chu gan lian yin, which is like more you know okay, really rolling up my sleeves and getting down to work. But also when you're eating and stuff, or sometimes when it's hot or sweaty, you don't want your hair getting into your food, you don't want your hair sticking onto your face, etc. So remember, etiquette is all about looking clean, looking presentable, and having a hair tie for us girls is key to that. All right, guys, so let me know what is in your bag. Tell me what the most fun thing you thought in my bag was today. Leave me a comment below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.